Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner of West Vault. And I'm going to do a quick shot here about how to manage your, um, what do you call, conditional statements inside your view file uh, within a MVC framework. So I'm talking about Laravel, I'm talking about E2. Now on this corner here, we have a conditional statement. Okay, if, else, if, and else, if again. All right. And as you can see, we're mixing PHP code with uh, HTML and then again PHP so this is getting a little bit messy right and once you look at this kind of mess you're gonna say okay can I do a better job on how to code like a PHP Pro by actually separating some of these things uh, inside so I'm gonna do a quick one and the first thing I'm noticing is that we've got some PHP uh, inside your HTML can we sort of push that out the other thing is if else Okay, if it's possible, can we use a switch statement that will simplify a lot of the stuff. So let's just go ahead and see what I can do. Okay, so what I'm thinking of is I'm going to use a switch here and then actually load the cases in. So you don't, this actually has like not much to be related to uh, the cases. And then what I'm going to do to remove some of this is that I'll move the div the div for the column outside because it seems to be appearing a few times so I'll just move that out there there's no need to replete yourself dry programming uh, and then maybe to get rid of all the HTML inside here I will use the e2 helper class that lets me create tags inside and then there will be less HTML inside so let's see how I go with it. okay so what I've done uh, as the plan is done uh, I've changed all the uh, HTML out using the E2 special characters. So what this mentally does is that we don't have to keep thinking between HTML, PHP, and then back, back, back to HTML. We are just thinking about just the code and then your brain can just simply treat this as uh, PHP. Okay, so after a few days, right, I came back and I refactored this code and I even simplified it even further, right? So one of the first few things is that you notice that previous um, switch that I had, right? That was basically just displaying some uh, HTML. And what I decided to do is just create an entire new table that actually loaded those times. So here's one area, if you can get rid of a switch statement if you can get rid of actually having to even check the logic and the HTML classes that you want to use do it that's the best way keep it simple stupid that's the best way so once we're done with that right there's only one if statement that we need to run over here and that is the simple is prepacked and you can go to like just go back in my video, check it for a few seconds and see how I managed to simplify it. And this often happens uh, when you're doing coding. You're going forward and you think, okay, we'll use an if statement. Then we'll switch to a switch statement. And then once you look at the overall picture, you say, look, maybe I can talk to the client. I can talk to the users and get something that's much more simpler here. And here, what I'm doing is if it's not set in the time, right, I just make it uh, not available. Okay, so very, very simple uh, coding that we have done over here. Um, I really like how much simpler this is, is. You've got rid of all the statements. And this is a point. So it's an unexpected outcome uh, example that I wanted to give you guys. Uh, next time I'll find something that has more if statements and we end up with a switch. But again, maybe this is something for you guys to take to note that sometimes you don't need to go with a complicated solution. Sometimes you can actually work up, work with the product side, work with the client side, come up with that solution. And you'll find this is actually quite common. So, okay, thanks very much. And that's the ball line because tech needs it. So.